covering, you guessed it, sleeping bags. But this is a 23 degree bag and it's like 9,000 degrees out here, so. All right, so you've decided to go on a backpacking trip and you've gotten some of your gear and now it comes down to sleeping bag and you start researching online and it's like, oh, you just get overwhelmed. Uh, I know how it is because I was there. So uh, what I did is I took a trip to um, the nearest REI uh, and I actually got my sleeping bag when I picked out my pack and I just went to the sleeping bag guy and I said, what do I do, you know? So your two main options are either down or synthetic. Generally speaking, now there are exceptions to all rules, right? But uh, your down bags are going to be a little bit lighter um, and take up a smaller space than your synthetic bags. Um, synthetic bags tend to be a little bulkier and heavier. With that said, of course, there are pros and cons to every option, right? So if you have a down bag, it is said that if it gets wet, it's pretty much completely useless. There is no um, insulation factor anymore, uh, whereas synthetic can get wet and still insulate you and keep you somewhat warm. Not saying it won't happen, but on the trail, I did not have a night where my sleeping bag got completely soaked. Um, I did have it get a little damp, you know, leaning up against my tent and things like that, but never soaked. And I kept it um, in a trash, like the contractor bag um, that I've shown y'all before inside my pack. So uh, they also have dry bags and all kinds of accessories to keep things dry. It's more weight, but that's up to you. I ended up going with a, uh, a down bag, but it's treated down, so they call it dry down, uh, which means that if it gets wet, it's not completely useless, supposedly. Again, I haven't tried soaking it and seeing how warm I stay at night. Uh, that's just what I decided to go with after talking to the guy at REI. So my exact sleeping bag is uh, the brand of Sierra Designs, and I've seen mixed reviews on this online. I actually didn't check the reviews before I bought it. Um, I just trusted my REI sleeping bag man. Um, but uh, it's 700 fill dry down. It's the Zizu, Zizu I can't even, I, I doubt I'm saying that right, 23. Uh, this is actually a men's sleeping bag. Um, the guy at REI told me that basically the difference between men, men's bags and women's bags uh, were the color, you know, like, oh, pink and purple or, you know, blue. Now, um, there has there have been some comments on another video that I've done where, you know, people were freaking out. No, it's, that's not the only difference. You know, the girls' bags are designed for girls and whatever. And that's probably true. That would make sense. Um, but using a man's bag, I never had any issues. So uh, maybe it's just my build. You know, I'm pretty tall or whatever. So um, you might want to delve into that a little bit more. Okay, so how do you decide what um, degree rating to get for your sleeping bag? That's kind of a big deal. So on the Appalachian Trail, uh, the lowest temperature that I slept in was probably about 21 degrees, um, and that was in Maine. Now, the ratings on these bags, if you'll notice, mine says 23 degrees, but hopefully you can see that. But it also says, that says limit, 23 degrees. Comfort, <laughs> 34 degrees. So, in other words, whatever your bag is rated, that's the rating to like keep you alive to that temperature. That's not, you're gonna be warm and toasty at that temperature. So, uh, I did have some chilly nights, uh, even in this 23 degree bag. Now, why wouldn't you wanna just take a zero degree bag? Well, you could, but the lower the temperature rating, usually the more it weighs, which makes sense, right? More insulation. I'm pretty cold natured, um, and I knew that I would get below freezing temperatures, and so I just wanted to be prepared for that. Um, so that's what made me decide to go with 23 degree bag. And again, I had some cold nights, but I'm still alive. All right, so as far as compactability goes, you're really not supposed to put down in a compression sack. So technically you could probably get a synthetic bag to compress smaller um, than a down bag potentially, but for the down, it'll like um, damage it, kind of like flatten it out. Uh, I found that if mine started feeling flat or it wasn't feeling like it was staying as warm at nights, um, whenever I went into town, if I would just kind of tumble it uh, in the dryer, not on a extremely high setting, um, but that it would kind of fluff it up. Now, that's another thing. If you're wanting to wash your sleeping bag on the trail, down is going to be a little bit more of a hassle to do that. You've got to have a special detergent, supposedly. I've actually still haven't washed mine. <laughs> so, um, but you're supposed to have like a front loading washer and a special detergent and all of that. Um, I have never tried regular detergent and my washer at the house, so I really don't want to destroy my bag um, doing that experiment. But, uh, with the synthetic bags, you know, you can pretty much wash them at every town if you wanted to. So again, pros and cons to each option. Now, if you decide to get a down sleeping bag, um, they typically come in these kind of big mesh bags uh, and you store it in these bags for long-term storage um, because that way they're not compressed. <laughs> Hank! 
just spray. But when you're on, well, when I was on the trail anyway, I kept it in this um, smaller bag here. Uh, it is not a compression sack. It's just, you know, a smaller bag. Um, and I just shoved it in my pack just like this. So uh, when you get to towns and, and things like that, um, I would definitely take your sleeping bag out and like lay it somewhere um, so that way it can stay fluffed up, you know, instead of being compressed the whole uh, whole time you're in town. Now the tag in my sleeping bag says it's 2.19 pounds, um, but after measuring it in the sack and everything, uh, it comes out to about 2.3 pounds. All right, so what a lot of folks will do is uh, they'll go with a higher rated um, bag, so like a, a 32 degree bag or even like 45 degree bag, something like that. And then in addition to that, they will get like a, a 20 degree bag or a zero degree bag or, you know, just kind of one on each end of the spectrum. Or you can just kind of get a bag that's in the middle of um, the two ends of the spectrum and then get like a sleeping bag liner. Now, the sleeping bag liner is like basically worthless. I mean, it adds a little bit of warmth. Uh, but it was more or less just because I had a synthetic or a down bag. Uh, that way, instead of washing it in towns, I could just take this out and wash it. Um, but you can get liners that uh, have a little bit more um, of an R value or they're a little warmer. So 0.33 for this little guy right here. Not gonna lie, in Pennsylvania, I ended up sending it home to save weight. <laughs> I just didn't care if I smelled bad anymore. One of the big questions is, when do I send home my warmer sleeping bag? If you do have two different sleeping bags, you'll know. When you're sleeping on top of your sleeping bag instead of in it because you're hot, you know, and I would give it about a week to really make sure because the weather will change and surprise you and then you'll be cold. But so what I did is I sent home my 23 degree sleeping bag probably somewhere around, I think it was Waynesville, Virginia. A lot of folks sent it home around Damascus, like during trail days. I would wait a little bit longer just to make sure. Um, being cold is not my favorite thing though. So in Waynesville, I found this uh, fleece liner um, it's got, you know, the whole zipper, the whole shebang. Um, now, it doesn't have as much cushion, uh, so, you know, that's where your, the comfort level of your sleeping pad will come in. But, um, anyway, this was definitely warm enough for the warmer months. Um, I liked that I could, like, climb inside of it like a sleeping bag. Some people get fleece blankets and have folks got them at the Goodwill and things like that along the way. Um, so I prefer this over two separate sleeping bags because I, I feel like this definitely saves weight. 1.08 compared to... 2.3 big difference. All right, so how do you know when to get your warmer sleeping bag back? <laughs> that gets a little trickier. Um, I actually didn't get mine back until sometime in Vermont. Uh, I started noticing that, you know, it got a little bit cooler at nights than I was comfortable with um, in the fleece liner. Now, you might not want to wait till you start getting uncomfortable because, I mean, it can snap and just be cold weather in no time. I mean, even, I guess you could in Massachusetts, but it was still hot then to me. Uh, but you'll know. You'll, it'll feel right. People around you will be talking about it, and you'll, you'll just know. I hope that was helpful and uh, ease your mind a little bit in, in picking a sleeping bag. I would definitely check reviews. Um, sleeping bags not something that I would skimp on uh, gear-wise even you know on a budget and everything I mean again you can um, and you can get a decent sleeping bag that might be a little bit heavier that's that's cheaper but you just want to make sure you're gonna be warm enough because hypothermia just doesn't sound like a lot of fun if y'all go to my blog which there's a link below www.homemadewanderlust.com I do have a gear list and my sleeping bag a link to the exact one that I used is on there if y'all want to you know check out the reviews or the specs on that one but uh, if y'all have any other questions about my sleeping bag in particular or um, sleeping bags in general, just comment below and let me know. And we will see y'all next time.